begin now with our call to worship. Be still and know that God is. God was also in the beginning. Move us during this patient waiting onward through to the harvest. Discovering that which is good. When all human striving has ceased, God will still be. From, from everlasting to everlasting, to everlasting. God, God is God, God and is alone and worthy is to be worshipped. Be worshipped. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God. We confess, confess that we do not we do trust, trust your, your abundance, abundance. And we deny your presence in our lives. We place Please. our hopes in ourselves and rely wow. on our own oh, efforts. No. We fail to believe, fail to believe that you that provide you enough for all. all. We abuse your abuse good your creation good for your own benefit. Own benefit. We fear difference, fear difference, and we do not we welcome, do not welcome others, others as you as has you welcomed have us. us. We sin we in sin thought, in word, word, and deed, and deed. by things, we, things do we do and things and we things leave we undone. undone. By your grace, your grace forgive, forgive us. us. Through your love, Through your love renew, renew us. us. And in your spirit, in your spirit lead, us, lead us, so we may so live we and live serve and you in newness, in newness of life. life. Amen. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical and abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope. For hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now pray together the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Faithful God, 
Most merciful judge, Lord, judge you care you for your for children, your children with, firmness with firmness and compassion. And compassion. By your Spirit, By your spirit nurture, nurture us who live in your, live kingdom, in your kingdom, that we may be we rooted may be in the rooted way of your, of your Son, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, our Savior, our and, Savior Lord. and Lord. Amen. Amen. Katie, we now have special music. Thank you, Katie. We now hear God's word. Tom? The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, the 44th chapter, beginning at the sixth verse. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm of the day is Psalm 86. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the pit of death. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent people seeks my life. They have not set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me 
may see it and be put to shame. Because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. The second reading is from the book of Romans, the eighth chapter, beginning at the 12th verse. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obey the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it, with patience. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. As we continue to mute ourselves, as uh, we continue on with the service, we, the gospel is from Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered them, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to them, Then what do you want us to do, to go gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned but gather the wheat into my barn. And he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evil doers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father, Let anyone with ears listen. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. We know that faith and religion are a growing, living in grace lifestyle. A joyous thing. 
God claims us in baptism and we're his own. And then we're off to the adventure of life. For faith to be real, it needs to have an actual, honest, real world. Not an imaginary world where we might be tempted to escape the reality of living. Christians live in the same world as everyone else. So faith is living in discernment of that world. And that's what the parables do so well. They teach in a very real-life manner. Last week, it was all about the soil. This week, that poor seed isn't prey to the soil, but to an act of sabotage, an enemy. Seeds have a tough time making it. Jesus' story tells us more about nitpicking weeding in the field of young wheat that, that does far more harm to the wheat than any possible good. It's damaging. So Jesus says, be patient, chill out. God will make things right. Don't be overly concerned with nitpicking. There's a Christian sense of patience that Christ is teaching us. Wait for it. Trust God. Things will change. That's life, even if evil surrounds the good. If you look outside the church windows out into the world, that's really good advice. Because when change happens, we become like those anxious field workers, wanting to immediately pick out the weeds. The lines get blurred, even as we know the weeds will be defeated. Now, part of that reaction is our need to be in control of the situation. Being in control gives us the illusion that things are calmer, more predictable. And so the impulse is to go out and pick the weeds out of the field. Never mind what you trample while you're pulling out both weeds and wheat by the handful. Now, we all have things in our lives that scare us. Everybody has something that they are scared of. In this pandemic, we have to acknowledge that we're scared of uncertainty. Weeds are a lot more on our mind. But the bigger picture, what weeds and wheat are over the horizon, what's coming. On July 10th, New York Times columnist David Leonhardt asked many experts what the year 2022 was, good, was going to be like. Just imagine a future time. The virus has long been controlled after a long, grueling time, over a million deaths globally. After a miserable year and a half, alternating between lockdowns, ignorant rejection of facts and science, new waves, outbreaks, finally, a new life begins to resurface. We pick up the pieces of what is left. These experts said that the current crisis has the potential to reshape our country just as deeply as World War II or the Great Depression shaped the last century. The wheat and the weeds are going to shake out to a different world when the harvest comes. It's a fascinating guess at the future. The economy is going to be completely different. People are becoming aware that Linking their health insurance with their employment may not be a good thing. Some weak businesses, department stores, and shopping malls are not going to be around. Online shopping is now permanent. Local newspapers are at risk as fewer businesses buy advertising. For the first time since the Civil War, hundreds of colleges are going to be closing. Public education is going to change. Traveling for business will be a mere shadow of what it once was, replaced by Zoom and all the other online media for everything but the essential business meetings. And that has a ripple effect on airlines, restaurants, car rentals, hotels. Office buildings will be empty. Working at home is now the norm. Change is going to reshape the future and our ideas of being together. History teaches us that after things like this happen, people do rally to new possibilities and new solutions. 
Now, now is not the time to be resuming what the final outcome is going to be. But I found that was an interesting article to read in the context of Jesus talking about wheat and weeds. It's like growing a wheat field. There are wheat and weeds in life. Things will shake out, we will adjust. And if we are Christians, then we follow Jesus into his wheat field. If we follow Jesus, we take his words and his teachings very seriously. There was another quote that caught my mind this past week too. Martin Luther taught that the parables of Jesus were there for our education, but also for our protection, protection against harm and evil. When Luther looked back on the changes in the Reformation, he had all the weeds in life to contend with. And he wrote these words. Things neither, neither should, can nor should run peacefully and smoothly. How can things run smoothly when the devil is in charge and is a mortal enemy of the gospel? So do not hope for any peace and quiet as long as Christ and his gospel are in the midst of the devil's kingdom. And woe upon the peaceful and smooth solution that used to be and upon those who would like to have it back. That's a sure sign that the devil is ruling with all his might and no Christ is there. That's a timeless thing to say. It's like the words in Ezekiel 13, beware of those who cry peace, peace when there is no peace. The point of all this is simple. We're living life in a contested space with competing claims. Wheat and weeds disorder in what should be a beautiful golden crop waving in the wind. Safety is one aspect of letting weeds and wheat grow together. We who are together with different spiritual gifts are wheat and weeds, yet we are one body. Luther put it plainly, we are sinners and saints at the same time. We have to put up with weeds and wheat our whole lives. So the parable is about relaxing a bit while doing what is good. Weeds are always going to surround the good work. But let God be God. Now, this parable is not easy. There is no grace here, no mercy, no forgiveness, just a lot of weed burning. And that could too easily split us off into judgmental binary thinking. People are either wheat or weeds, saved or unsaved, which injures ourselves, our relationships, and the world. The better wisdom is to know that we are weeds and wheat at the same time. But the benefit is knowing that the wheat is God's. God is going to do the ultimate harvest. And so we work for the good. We don't listen to the weeds. We ignore them. We work to keep them from growing. But we're not going to be able to unroot them. That's what sin is in the world. And so we nurture the wheat until the harvest comes. Whisper words of wisdom. Let it be. Let it be. Amen.
Thank you. We now join together in the offertory prayer. Lord God, creator of the universe, we thank you for your great generosity. All that we are and all that we have are a gift from you. All of time, past, present, and future is a gift to be appreciated and used wisely. Help us to serve one another and so reflect your spirit and goodness. Accept the offerings we send and grant that the cause to which they are devoted may prosper under your guidance. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. We now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now pray together. Liz? Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ into your field. Help Help your church throughout the world to be both diligent and patient, full of res resolve and gentleness, that our witness may be faithful to your intentions for our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all space and time, your whole creation groans in labor pains, awaiting the gift of new birth. Renew the earth, sky, and sea, so that all your creation experiences freedom from the bondage of decay. Help us to be good stewards of that weight, so that all life on the planet may continue without human harm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, teach us your ways that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of human family, now torn apart by our fearful and warring ways. <clears throat> Lead us on our pilgrimage what works for all people in fairness and impartiality. Guide us by your mercy, grace, and steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the brokenhearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair, and all who suffer in any way. Release the captives, heal the sick, give hope to those oppressed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the seasons, in the midst of our summer, give us refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities to enjoy the outdoors before the rains and darkness. We pray for the safety of those who travel. We pray for those who cannot take the rest they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, those who have died in you shine like the sun in your endless kingdom. We remember with thanksgiving the saints of all times and places and saints close to us. Gather us with them on the day of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We now receive the prayers of our fellowship in silence and in chat and in word.
Lord God, watch over Christian on his birthday and watch over his cousin Robin as she uh, has a birthday tomorrow and is uh, battling uh, lung cancer. Mm. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Yeah, prayer. For all those who are doing the good work of the wheat in this time of trial. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, grant us peace, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Our closing hymn is When Peace Like a River. It is well, it is well, 
with my soul. With my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. Oh, listen, good, seek what is righteous, be strong, Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. We now have our prelude. Katie? Thanks, Katie. Thank you so much. Well, time for some coffee, everybody.